We greet everyone, the beloved church, our brethren who are watching us through Zoom and YouTube. We greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We're bringing here the greetings from our brethren, then from Africa. I'm living in Angola and Bo Mozambique in Angola. And I like to say, I usually like to say that the Lord could place Oh, put a requirement. If you want to go to heaven, you need to go through Africa. You need to know Africa as a criteria. You need to know the suffering of our brethren there in Africa. I say this because we have here. Everything is so easy. Everything here is so easy. Sometimes we not give enough worth. Before reading the word, we're going to read the word, which is more important. Let's read the word then. For Samuel, chapter 17, verse, verse 45, 17, 45, let's stand up, 1 Samuel 17, verse 45, is here in the projection, but it's always good to pick up your, our Bible and Find the verses there, right? First Samuel 17, verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the arms of Israel, whom you have def defied. Lord God, give us a blessing as we meditate on your word, feed our soul, and that's why we're here, to be fed by you, to glorify and exalt your name. In the name of Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, the text in the word that we just read to the Lord, because it is the topic of the question for the children on Sunday school this morning. So the children answered those questions, and they answered this question. And it's very interesting how our children know how we are victorious. Since their tender, tender age, they are learning how to defend themselves. How do we defend ourselves in our fight and spirit with the hosts and enemies? We overcome in the name of the Lord. Amen. And Pastor Nino just reminded us that of an experience that we had there in Africa. I live in Angola, but I pastor six churches there in Mozambique. But there in Angola, we help the pastor. We give assistance to Pastor Eduardo, who was old from the way he converted. The older he can remember. He, his wife, uh, she, they wanted to open up the gifts. She shared the experience with them that she, what she saw what she learned from the work of the Lord, and then they became convert. They converted. But at that day, it was completed 15 years of life, an experience of Ezekiah. So the Lord took that sister away, and the husband received the blessing of the church, and now he's been pastoring for 30 years. So if we do evangelization of children in the city of 
Wambu, which is about 800 kilometers from Luanda, the place where we live in the capital of Angola. And there, when we arrived there, the, the sisters, they have prepared the words, the, the roads are not very good, not, not like carpets like we have here. It is difficult to get there. But we arrived in the city, but until we came to the city, to the church, there is still a long path uh, on an unpaved road. It's more holes than road. <laughs> but I know that the brethren, they make a great effort and give, give great worth to the service. And I arrived there and the sisters invited us and they asked, how many people are going to come to this church service? It was actually a, a children meeting in March. How many children do you think that are going to come into this meeting? And the teachers asked, 400 children are going to come. And they asked, why? Well, because we invited 400. So the experience that we have is different when we invite 400, 80, maybe 160, 100, or 400. We invited 400 people and 400 people are coming. So they bought 400 bread, small bread, with a slice of cheese and a slice of ham, nothing special, and a little bit of juice for each child, 400 of each. And on the following day, it was a Saturday, in the early dawn, at 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, even before 6, we woke up, I went to sleep in a house that was in front of the church. And the brethren, they embraced us and hosted us in a wonderful way. They would had pleasure to be with us out of gratitude. And, was, and we were thankful to the Lord to be here. And they expressed that gratitude. It was a wonderful thing. And before 6 o'clock in the morning, we heard a, a lot of noise there in the front. And the classes were going to start at 9 o'clock in the morning. Two classes, 9 o'clock in the morning. But even before 6 o'clock in the morning, the sound started. So around 8 o'clock, we uh, got, out, got out there. We saw the quantity of children that, was, that were at the door. And many got out of their house at 3 o'clock in the morning, barefoot with the ripped clothing. And they walked for a long distance to be there. And I see how God is wonderful. And those children... They filled the place there. Nobody told me I was there at the door. There was a church there. Well, the houses, the room was like this. It was subdivided in many rooms. So there was the room where there was going to be the meeting of the adolescents. And on the, ba on the back, we don't have the, the fo photo there, right? Uh, so I'm going to send Pastor Orlando so for him to show to you. On the backyard, there was, you know, was the floor was just the ground, unpaved, and the children were going to stay there on the back. And there was a gate. I was on the gate to count to see if there were enough children, enough. Uh, there was enough food for the children. Six six hundred and seven children arrived. There was no room for anything, anybody else. Oh, I have to stop. There's no room for anybody else. The children began to sit in the front, and the ones, the ones were on the back had to stand up to, for, so for this quantity to feed, and all these people there, and outside, a, a few there remain outside because they, they, there was no room for them. A lot of children coughing, sick, and we saw an operation of wonder. The children glorifying the Lord because we were there, because we were concerned with them and thanking the Lord for having sent us there. It was very moving to see the love of those children for the service. And sometimes we have things so easy and we don't give earth to, the, to it. And in order to go to the city back with uh, so, much, so many holes on the road, some uh, west uh, uh, usher there to go to the city and to buy more bread and a little bit more food. 
to complete the quantity and everyone fed, every, even the ones who stayed outside, the bread and served them out the, outside and did not want to leave, let us out. They didn't, when the service was over, they, I don't know if they went there because of the food or because of the word, but they all went there and heard the word and brought the word into to their homes. And the children that came from far away, far away, there was nobody helping them. They went alone. In, in Africa, the families are very large, so we have we have serves uh, we have 60, 70 points connected, but in each house there at least five or six people and the large majority doesn't have a cell phone. We spoke with a deacon there. He was not showing up a lot in the service and he said to the pastor, Pastor, I make, I earn $40 a month. 1,000 Kwanzas. Which is like $3. 1,000 Kwanzas is like $3 to watch a service. Many times I have to make a decision or either I feed my children or participate in the service. And here we have internet, unlimited internet. I have a room so precious like this one. So this testimony for, for the brethren to give worth what the Lord has given to you. We are there, we have been there since March of 2020. The temple is closed, it cannot open because the church grew so much. There's not even room enough for 20% of the brethren. And since that there is uh, a freedom, but it's a vigilant freedom, uh, the church cannot open because the room is going to be filled and it, the church is going to come and the, the police are going to close the church. It's going to be more complicated. So we have a, the brethren we have served over the internet and the brethren that don't have internet receive assistance by the ones that have, have internet. This, what we have there, is the result of the prayers of the brethren here. When we pray on that month for the, the work abroad, the brethren who are here are praying for the ones who are there, and the ones who are there are praying for you here. The result is salvation of life and glorification in the name of the Lord. And the text that we just read here, David, the struggle of David against the Philistine. We see a situation why the, the siblings of David did not overcome the Philistine. Why the people of Israel did not face Goliath. What prevented them from having this victory? Since even the brother David reproached him because he was a, a young man. You're just a young man. Look at your size. David was short and his siblings were tall. And they said, no, go away. You came here to give us trouble, get, in, get us into trouble. But David saw, heard that David was making himself available to fight against the giant. And David gave a word to Saul. And he said, look, I was taking care of the sheep of my father. And a, a bear and a lion, they came to devour and kill the sheep. I grabbed on to their mane and I killed them. It happened to the, the lion and with the bear. And Saul said, look, may the Lord be with you fight the giant. But the conviction of David was so great that the Lord was going to give him victory that he knew. Look at my size. So skinny. I was able to kill the lion was was because the Lord gave me this victory. And the same God that gave, you, gave me victory there is going to give me victory here. There they were trying to kill the sheep of my father. Now they're uh, attacking the army of my God. The same God that was with me there is going to be with me here. Why the Lord 
give the same type of conviction to the siblings of David. The siblings of David, surely, they had, they could have even have the same intimacy with God. Maybe they may have had some sort of uh, uh, jealousy against his, uh, their brother. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm older. Um, I'm bigger, but they didn't b trust in the Lord. They trusted on themselves, maybe. And when we trust in ourselves, we grow afraid. When the trial comes, we become afraid. But when we are trusting in the Lord, we know that the victory is guaranteed. And David, he was sent by his father to take the food to the brethren to his siblings. And Jesus was sent by the Father. He himself, he served us food for us, the living bread that was sent by the Father. David, he went there, he fought, he defeated Goliath, he overcame death, and he returned to the Father. Jesus came to this world, he defeated death, in return to his father. And David returned as a king, and Jesus is going to return to reign, to take the church to eternity. And this reference of David, this comparison of David and the Lord Jesus, and everything that David did not fail or sin, he, David typif typifies Jesus. And the word for us is living and has efficacy. We trust in the Lord. With, and the example of David is the example of the Lord Jesus. The Lord overcame death, and in Him we will overcome. David, this was not the only battle that David overcame. It was not the battle of the bear or the lion that David was victorious on. From that point forward was the beginning of the experiences that David had with the Lord. From that point forward, David had many victories in obedience and of the exercise of faith. The Lord has given us great blessings on Sunday school. Whoever misses Sunday school, misses great teachings that the Lord is preparing us for, for the battle, preparing us for the rapture that is coming close and in a very short time. Our children have been at, uh, attacked by the teachings of this world. The parents have been attacked with everything that we see out there. But we need to go home and change the teachings so that our children may not grow up corrupted with the teachings there are out there. And yesterday on the early dawn service in Hallandale, a mother with a child, and the child was very sleepy, but was there firm with the mother. And I thought, wow, what a wonderful thing. The child on the early dawn service, they will never forget. David, you went there on the river, picked up five stones, and so we have the resource of grace. With only one of those stones, David killed Goliath. There are resources that the Lord has given us. Sometimes we only use one, an early dawn service, or a prayer, or a fasting. A few other stones that we have at our disposal. And that child will never forget, and it was an early dawn service that my mother sought the resources for victory. Teach our child on the path that they need to walk, and they want, and when they grow up, they will not go, go astray from it. I'd like to share an experience, Pastor Renildo. I worked as an ambassador. I'm Pastor uh, If you give me 15 minutes, I'll, um, I'll be able to share it. Where was I? Oh, the experience. 
Yes, I worked as an ambassador in Venezuela. Then we went to Brasilia, and in Brasilia, he called me one day and said, Pira, I'd like to make a donation to a church. And how is this? And he said, no, how it is? The Lord has bothered me to give a, an offering to your church. But what kind of offering? There, you have children, right? What kind of children? Oh, I want to give an offering to the children. And I, I said, okay. I'm going to give him clothing and toys. Choose a church that is in greater need. And okay, let's do this. So then I recall the pastor from a board that is very poor. And I asked him, and he consulted the Lord. The Lord did not allow it. And then, what am I going to say to the ambassador? I asked. I answered yes, and now, no. Then I spoke with the pastor from a church much poor in the divide between Brazil and Goiás in Brazil. And they consulted the Lord. It was a wonderful word was given. And the Lord said I was going to give an experience through that donation. So then they sent the ambassador. He bought a lot of things. We put on the car in the afternoon, at three uh, of the afternoon, we went there. When we arrived, it was a new church in a very poor neighborhood, but the presbytery built a church there. And a brother who was a pastor donated uh, a land for the church, had many lands, and he donated a land. And the Lord gave a blessing that presbytery built a church there. The church was new, but the people was very poor. But when we went to the prophetic service on the annex on the back, there were a bunch of children with it. And then he felt he, his eyes filled with tears. The children were, were barefoot and filled with sandals, but very worn out. And they were playing instruments. And then the ambassador came and greeted everyone, introduced the pastor, and he said, Look, I'd like to bring to you a testimony to the children. I'm an ambassador today, but I was I was poor in the past. I'm not a politician. I don't want to ask him for a vote. I'm, a, I'm an ambassador from Korea. Do you know what that is? You know what you can be? You can be ambassador as well. You can be whatever you want. Because two things. You are the Lord. Whoever has the Lord has everything. Look, the testimony of someone that was not a Christian. But now you need to make an effort. I studied a lot. But the Lord placed me in this position, and you can be as well. So the children began to sing songs of praise. They sang two or three songs, and the pastor preached a very short message. Everything was over. They offered the, the gifts, and they began to introduce him to the rest of the church. They opened up the temple, and he said, What a wonderful church! Then we went to the children's room. Look, and he arrived. There was a room, the children intermediate. And what he said, look, there's no one look inside. What did he see there inside of that room? So then he, his his eyes were tearing up. And he, I'm not going to talk about it because the Lord is working on him. So let's go, let's go. He thanked everybody and we left. And on the way, he asked, the, uh, asked Peter, Peter, I want to make an, another donation to the church. I want to make a donation of a TV. TV? Okay. I saw in that little room there, a TV that's so old. That broke my heart. The, all the resources that I have, children are so poor, they don't even have a TV to watch their class. But first he asked, how were the other churches? And I said, when, and then he asked, how the other children watch their class? And I explained that they have their room there, and they have a TV, and the sisters there would put the classes there. And he was amazed with that. I want to give a TV. Because I saw there a TV that was so old. And that broke my heart. Okay, so he bought a TV, a 50-inch TV, 55 inches, I, I'm not sure. 
So then he gave it to me. I went there and get delivered to Pauline, pastor of the church, and Pauline was so happy with that gift. And he said, Peter, this is the answer to the prayer of the children. We don't have the, the resource to buy the TV. The children said to the pastor, we need a TV. The pastor said, children, you pray, the Lord has power to answer your prayers. So this is the answer of, 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 answer the, of the prayer of the children. So now, what is the size of the TV that you have? Oh, we never had TV here. I went to the rooms, there was no, no room. What, what is he talking about? There was never been a TV there. Then that room, there has never been a TV. So the Lord has shown the ambassador an old TV there that didn't exist. The room was empty. There was no TV. But the ambassador saw an old TV. And the Lord that served does that. Look, ambassadors, they are like this. They, they don't spend money. But the Lord touched their heart, touched his heart. And after that, I want my wife to go there. She She's also an ambassador. She's not the wife of an ambassador. She also is a, an ambassador. I'm not going to say his name, but tonight, but he's, um, he's an ambassador in Montevideo, in Uruguay. He's going to be amazed if he sees this. Pastor, uh, Ambassador Antonio Simões, a man that helped a lot when we began the work in Venezuela. Every time they needed to bring a people there to go to Venezuela to know the work in Brazil, we spoke with him and he would allow us and the Lord has, the work has grown there in Venezuela. So my brethren, this is the Lord that we serve. If you trust Him, He'll never forsake us. And the Lord gave us a spiritual gift. When I open the word here, what am I going to speak about the spiritual gift that the Lord has given for the service to the, tonight? Look to me and you'll be saved, you, all the ones that are on earth. Because I'm God, there's no other. There's no other God. And then, the brethren, read at home. Isaiah 45, from verse 20. Well, the verse that I read, 22. From verse 20, the, the Lord has a message for you. Amen. And David over, was victorious and trusted in the Lord. When we trust the Lord, we are more than victorious. The Lord has brought us here. Won't bring us to that day. It's coming here. For a little more time. The Lord is coming. It's not going to delay. The Lord is not going to delay. Soon, the Lord is going to bring this church. The Lord has given a direction uh, for the Sunday schools and a sequence we're going to begin here we're going to go back in the book of Songs of Solomon but everything that the Lord has, teached, has taught us has strengthened our faith and our trust in the Lord our faithfulness has prepared us for this great day Jesus is at the doors give your heart to the Lord and trust in Him and we'll, He'll take care of everything else Amen Let's sing a song. Ora Deus. Ora Jesus. Aleluia. Fora de
Lord of the Lord to God. Hallelujah. I'd like to invite the church to stand up. My brethren, we who have heard here, we heard the Lord bring us, bringing us a new encouragement so that we can give worth what, to what the Lord has given us. Give worth to the service. Give worth to the church that the Lord has given to you. The Lord has uh, one that is much bigger than this one. Soon, the brethren will be there. And it's going to be such a privilege. Give worth to the service, my brethren. Give worth. It's coming Sunday. We're going to have a mini seminar there in Hollandale, right? I know that for many it's very difficult. But we're not the ones that walk four hours barefoot. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Bless be your name, Lord. Eternal God, we praise you for the, our stewardship for this, of this temple, for this wonderful place that you have given us. How many instruments, how many servants, Lord, voices, what a wonderful thing. Everything prepared by the Lord. Blessed be your name. Glory to Jesus. Eternal Father, we praise you for everything that you have done for us, for the service, Lord, the presence of your angels with us. Lord, accept our gratitude. We're not deserving, but you are good. Accept our service, and we say to the church in your name that the eternal, incomparable love of God the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, our eternal Savior, and the consolations that the joy and fellowship with your spirits, the Holy Spirit may be with the beloved church now and forever. Amen. Remember, beloved, you can be seated. Anything else, Pastor Renal? Amen. We're praying for our co workers, right? You want peace at work, you want a blessing at work. Pray for the Lord to save your co-worker. Oh, but I don't have a job, Pastor. No, pray so that the Lord may open a door. Pastor Dodge came to a church and he, he, he said the following. Let's pray for the teachers. And then he said, Pastor, we don't have teachers. Why don't you have teachers? Because we don't have children. Oh, okay. So there's no children because there's no teacher so let's pray for the teachers for them to be anointed and the church the, the, the teachers are going to pray and the children are going to come if you don't have work pray for your co-worker uh, you prophesy and the Lord will honor you amen your work's not doing well the, the times are making it difficult for you to come to, to the church pray and the Lord will bless you I'd like to remind you that David did not win in a reckless way. He went there, he took the five stones from the river, and it was not just recklessly. Surely he about to get the stones, he prayed. Maybe David was fasting before he went to the battle. Surely David feared the Lord. David went there pleading to the Lord. And when you chew the stone, a revelation, the revealed word has power to do everything. Dissipate any situation. Pray. And the Lord is going to give you victory. Amen. Peace of the Lord. We are here at your disposal to pray if you have any need. We are here at your disposal. And the brand from Zoom. If you need a prayer, there's a group there. There is a brother, beloved deacon. I have two deacons there. Glory to God. Leandro Marcos. If you need prayer, 
raise your hand and the brethren are going to create a room for you. And we are here at your disposal. Peace of the Lord, my brethren, and peace of the Lord to you as well.